Hi, my name is Ed Minger, and uh, I am running to be Secretary of State of Washington. There's only four of us, and this video is going to be, uh, I haven't actually looked at this slideshow that I'm about to put my face into. Um, I haven't looked at it since I did this video last for my website at edminger.com. Um, I'm advocating for something called approval voting, and it would give people in a general election three to five options. As Secretary of State, I would take my experience as a a social studies teacher to give tools to all voters so that they can do research on the three to five candidates. I'm refusing to purchase advertising, refusing to purchase access to voters, eyes, ears, and minds. And then that's the rule too, right? You get elected that way. You show you can win a statewide office um, in a sort of an alternative way. And then that gives you credibility to say, Hey, instead of fighting every single donor at once, when we tell them who they can donate to and how much and whatever, let's just make it so we don't need their money anymore. So um, I'm not purchasing advertising. And then uh, that would be the rule. And if outside people still want to desperately purchase outside advertising in support of a campaign, they'd still be free to do that, but they would just uh, look suspicious, like even more than they already do. So I'm going to run you through approval voting if you don't already know. Um, and then I'm going to invite you into a dialogue with uh, basically, instead of it being approval voting versus pick one option voting, why don't we make it approval voting is clearly better, ranked choice is clearly better, and the other one is clearly the outdated one. Like we have multiple better options to choose from, and um, it's our system. So let's do that. Uh, let's pick one. Cool. So, um, oh yeah, I gotta do that. Cool. Okay. Your vote is your choice. How do we make our choice? You guys are kind of inner insiders, so I'm going to go through this kind of quick. We ask ourselves, who is most likely to win in the general election? We're going to ask who's going to fight for my major priorities. Who seems to be a decent person? Who seems like they can work with others? And who has good ideas? Unfortunately, it's more like this. Who is most likely to win in the general election? And who will fight for my major priorities? Oh, I can't vote for them unless they, they're not going to win in the general election. So I, I got to move on. Who seems to be a decent person? I want a decent person unless... Unless they're not going to win in the general election, then I have to shift my vote to the other person who seems like they can work with others. Yes, I want somebody that's a collaborator, somebody that's a listener, unless that person is not likely to win in the general election. And then who has good ideas, interesting ideas, things like approval voting. Okay, cool. So in this situation, you pick all that you approve of. The intended consequences are you get rid of this. Who's most likely to win in the general election? And so my, I discovered approval voting 2012-ish. 13-ish, somewhere in there, um, and was never going to get into politics and was just kind of hoping somebody else would solve the problem. But with our current challenges, kind of saw like, you can campaign from home right now. And I was like, I that sounds much more appealing. So I'm in the race and I wouldn't have been in the race had this stuff not happened. Um, and so, um, okay. Um, so approval voting, you actually get to think about these things and you might find somebody that's going to fight for your ma major priorities and you check that box. And instead of ranking that above who seems to be a decent person, you can say, you know what, this person has slightly different ideas than me, but I check that box too. Um, who seems like they can work with others. You know what, this person's a really good team oriented person. They have no ideas, but every time they're in a forum, they're getting ideas from the other people and they're like, that's great. So check the box. Um, and then who's has some ideas. I, I fear with ranked choice voting that parties, I guess, and groups of folks, factions that George Washington warned us against in his farewell address, um, that they would still sort of coordinate um, to like say who's going to be our number one and who's going to be our number two so that that's safe. And so it could be my misunderstanding of what ranked choice voting is and how it works, but I feel like there's still be this sort of coalescing around everybody's one. And I'm not sure... Um, I, I don't think it leaves an opportunity for a two or a three to ever win, if that makes sense. But maybe, maybe it does. So I'm going to break down what I like about approval voting, because this is the one I know about. And then I'm just, before I do that, and kind of after what I just said, it's important to say this, I reserve the right to change my mind based on new information. So like, this is a dialogue, right? <laughs> this is, this is like, we, we can all agree that picking a choice is bad. And now let's look at the merits and balance the merits of approval versus ranked choice voting. So here it is at work. Your new ballot has a slight twist, and that's the instructions. 
you select all that you approve of. So you still have 37 options for your gubernatorial candidate. So now you get to, and you have to research all 37 of them if you really want to be informed. Um, but you can probably narrow it down just by the voters pamphlet. Um, cool. So you just check all the boxes you approve of. So my intended outcome and my belief about this is that this is going to bridge the left, right, and center in interesting ways. Because appeals towards the center like somebody that says, I'm a devoted centrist running to change the way elections work, to open up the system for everybody, okay? Um, <laughs> so somebody in the middle who can sort of speak to conservative ideas a little bit, speak to Eastern Washington, for instance, on a statewide office, be like, hey, I understand you and I'm listening to you and I wanna know more and here's an idea that maybe we can fix it together. And then be able to turn around to some folks in more liberal areas and listen to them and say, hey, I wanna hear what your challenges are and what your struggles are. And sort of mediator type people that, um, It'll hear those. And if somebody is asking you to do something as an elected official, hey, you need to do this right now. You can like be that middleman, that person that says, you know, the impact of the other side of Washington or some other you know, group in Washington or some other industry, the impact of that actually outweighs the good that it's going to do for you. And look them in the eye and maybe even I don't want to say educate them, basically, but we don't know each other. Sometimes we feel like Eastern Washington doesn't understand Western Washington in that way. And um, and the other way around. So uh, this would make mediators, people that are willing and able to talk to multiple issues and understand how things are complicated and then communicate that to folks, would likely get approved of by more folks, by lots of folks. So my guess is a lot of those types of folks would win, but unlike, and here's another question I guess I have, <clears throat> in approval voting, if you have a fringe candidate that's got new and innovative ideology, um, that is gonna have more influence over the middle too. So for instance, whoops, <laughs> the environmentalist or a fair tax candidate, so somebody that might be kind of far to the left or somebody that might be kind of uh, have an interesting idea on the right, maybe they get 38% approval. And so if you're that centrist that's devoted to listening to everybody um, and you no longer needed to pay for advertising, so your hands aren't tied to donors or anything else like that, um, you can look at the results and say, oh, people like enough people care about the environment that they're willing to take a single issue candidate and say, yep, if nothing else, like this person, yes. <laughs> and actually listen and do something about this. And I'm not sure if there's a similar mechanism um, in rank choice or how that works. The effect on parties. So folks that have a yearning for a third party don't need to get all organized about that. There's multiple choices, as you know, with either option, rank choice or this one. Um, it keeps the parties accountable, flexible, and inclusive to new ideas. Okay, they have to they have to be listening to the fringes or whatever. It also gives permission of people for people that lean a bit right or lean a bit left to not have to cut out a sliver like with single preference voting. Cut out a sliver of this electoral uh, bell curve and say, that's my base, that's who I'm gonna to speak to, and I'm gonna talk trash in every direction to get headlines, because there's 36 other people in the race for governor, so I need to get as many headlines as I can. Ugh. Like just, <laughs> just, ugh. yeah. So this uh, keeps those parties accountable and flexible. Like you don't need to feel like you need to cut a sliver out of the whole political spectrum and speak just to that. Um, you can address other people's ideas. Um, okay, cool. Approval voting from a voter's perspective. Here's some old favorites. You have a decent, slight conservative, decent, slight liberal. Somebody that agrees with you a lot, but they're kind of rude. Somebody has one amazing idea, then Clinton and Trump. Cool. All right, so normally, of course, we would go towards Clinton and Trump because they're most likely to win in a general election. However, when we see how many people approved of these folks, we see that the decent, slight conservative and the decent, slight liberal are very, um, they did well. And the person that agrees with you a lot and probably other people a lot got 49%. So that's interesting. And the one amazing idea caught on with 48% of people. This will keep the winners on the right track. And the lessons after election are this, the decent slight conservative and the decent slight liberal almost won. So what does that tell Clinton and Trump about decency? There you go. Cool. If you have somebody that's kind of rude, but agrees with you a lot, we learn that it's not just ideology. It's how you conduct yourself. It's how you treat others. It's how you speak to multiple sides of issues. If you're kind of rude, you're kind of punished in approval voting. Um, and then that one amazing idea, whoever wins, Clinton or Trump, that one amazing idea can just be stolen. Just like, oh, half the people were willing to vote for just that. Um, we are free to do it, no matter what party it came from or what party we're in. Awesome. Best news of all, that's just the general election. So now you get to select all that you approve of, or that was just the primary election. So for the general election as well, decent slight conservative versus decent slight liberal versus Clinton versus is Trump. 
Um, and uh, as Secretary of State, we're going to figure out more details. How do we eliminate people, right? Um, how do we do we want it to be if you got less than 50% approval, you're out? Do we want to be top three, top five? So those are all questions I have about approval voting. And maybe those get you thinking about how it may or may not apply to um, rank choice. <clears throat> cool. So candidates with attitude, approach, and skills that appeal to most of us, things like listening and um, courtesy and uh, teamwork, collaboration, and things that mirror our actual work environment. Like if you think about the best boss you ever had, they weren't a boss. <laughs> they were a team member. They led by example. They practiced what they preached, but they knew a lot about what they were doing. And they were willing to come out and say, hey, I screwed up and uh, the deadline's tomorrow and I need all hands on deck to help me fix it. And that's my bad. When's the last time you heard an elected official say, my bad? <laughs> this is going to be rewarded behavior. Okay, People that can come out and say, we wrote a law last year um, and it didn't do very well. And you can absolutely say negative things about it because look, we expected this to happen and unfortunately this happened and it was way over budget. So we're going to go back to the drawing board. Thank you for your feedback and your patience with us. That's how we can solve problems under approval voting, I do believe. Awesome. Um, this still allows innovative ideas to get attention and then it get adopted by the middle, um, which is often, as you know, <laughs> slow to do cool stuff. It's why I'm running for an executive statewide office from being a junior high social studies teacher. My whole focus has been on making representative government more representative. My cynicism that I'm recovering from <laughs> is, um, is that we, we don't feel heard and we don't feel like we hear each other. And therefore, we have an election system that creates dysfunction in governing and has rules that create this, that everybody feels like is normal and just the way it can be. Um, and it, it's, it's, that's incorrect. Like it's our system and it needs to reflect the best of us. And right now it doesn't. So um, interestingly enough, you can vote to reflect your true preferences. Isn't that great? Uh oh, my little face is gonna be in the way. Cool. So I've actually created this. It's on edminger.com. Secretary of State voting methods, just like a worksheet. I'm a teacher. I think in worksheets sometimes. Edminger Secretary of State is gathering information related to approval voting and ranked choice voting. However, we also want to use this opportunity to demonstrate how important, fun, and simple your involvement can be in the decision-making process. Furthermore, if the government leaves you out of this decision-making process, they have deprived you of a constitutional guarantee, a guarantee that must merge with the education level of our population and utilize the technology tools that we currently have at our disposal. On this form, you're going to see the goals, guidelines, and feedback forms, and an unofficial vote for voting methods. Um, the goals that I have, and you can check and maybe decide if ranked choice fits this or how or how it's better or whatever. Number one, never feel like your vote's wasted by choosing sort of outside of the two major parties. Number two, allow an opportunity for consensus building candidates to gather support. And then this is number three is where I think ranked choice, my understanding of ranked choice, I think number three is lacking a little bit. Um, gain an accurate picture of which candidates are resonating, uh, resonating with voters, thus putting focus on the ideas of candidates who do not win. Awesome. So below you can add sources, arguments, or summaries about the merits or the shortcomings of each system. And I fully invite you to go to Rank Choice and put some stuff in there. Um, as you edit and revise these documents, please do the following. Number one, keep others' contributions intact. Demonstrate respect by only posting appropriate information. So these are sort of open source legislating examples. Um, and if you check out the Washington State 10, that uh, elected research group that I'm proposing, um, this kind of thing we would have more time for when we make proposals about controversial big changes. People will have buy-in, they'll have a voice throughout the process. It's all good, it's all connected, it's all related to make representative government more representative. And then at the end, when you're done doing this, unofficial vote for voting methods. You and your organization, you're so biased. You're so biased. I know you're going to pick yours, but <laughs> I'm not Jim, but I had to fill it out once to make sure it worked. Are you an eligible voter? What county are you in? And then we're going to just use all three. Three. We're going to use it three voting methods. Which method do you prefer? You only get to choose one. Which voting method uh, do you prefer? And you get to select all that you approve of. And then at the end, which voting method do you prefer? rank your choices. And if you guys know, I see how you're using Google Forms. Um, we're going to get to see data. Okay, so I'm trying to get this the heck out there. Like go research, go educate yourself. Your organization can um, go educate themselves. Um, again, I guess kind of was a while ago, but when I offhandedly mentioned like it's ranked choice versus approval voting, um, I, I'm, I like approval voting. And as Secretary of State, I would be leaning heavily in that direction. Um, that said, um, I'd like you guys to be open and or honest and or, you know, give, 
give approval voting a fair shot, even though you've been doing a lot of work on rank choice, but also give me feedback, you know, if I was incorrect or misassessed, basically convince me, change my mind <laughs> um, about this. Okay, cool. Um, there's never a script for these things. So sorry if that was long or rambling or whatever. I think it's necessary information for the dialogue that I'm hoping to create. But I did try to speak quickly um, because you guys seem to really know what you're doing and what you're talking about. You probably understood everything I said, even though I said it fast. With that, I am going to figure out where the stop button is. Thank you very much, and I look forward to hearing from you.